Court leader Raila Odinga has this morning met with several ODM governors in his Capitol Hill office. Raila addressed the governors on audit queries raised by the Auditor General's report, and he also castigated President Kenyatta over his rejection to append his signature to the petroleum bill. Here is part of his address. Every part of this country has its own resources that they can can or have developed over the years for the benefit of the residents and the entire nation. We have regions that have done well in agriculture and fully enjoyed its proceeds. It is clear that what the president cannot countenance, the fact that the future economy of this country will be dependent on counties and peoples that have been neglected and treated with the contempt ever since the colonial days and in all our years of independence as low potential areas. The attempt by the president to reduce the benefits whose communities and counties are entitled to from their oil amounts amount to an attempt to steal from these, those communities and counties through illegitimate executive orders. It is geared at ensuring that the marginalized communities of Kenya will never sit on the high table of this country, even when they eventually discover resources that should lift them out of poverty. In this memorandum, the president has said marginalized communities should not be paid more than twice what they receive as the annual allocation in the Division of Revenue Bill. Such a limitation stipulating the maximum communities can get seems limited to petroleum. There is no such limitation on what other people can receive as revenue share from other resources. Is there a maximum to what Nairobi or Kiambu can receive in land rates? Is there a maximum to what other counties can receive from agricultural, agricultural levies? Why petroleum? Mr. President, the dreams of the Turkana, Pokot, Maraquet, <coughs> Coastal, <coughs> or Somali children are as valid as those of other children from other parts of Kenya. What is worse is that the president used the lamest excuse to deny the marginalized communities their birthright by saying that their counties have problems absorbing the budget. The true position is that the national government has a worse record on absorption of budget than counties. You have never seen ministries or other national government agencies denied monies in the budget on account of their failure to absorb their previous allocations. In fact, most counties have a better budget absorption than many national government ministries and agencies. In any event, there's no reason why we cannot create a sovereign fund for counties into which all monies due to the counties and local communities are invested and the money is released to them as they require and at a rate that they can absorb. Instead of what the president is doing or robbing the future generations of marginalized communities and allocating their birthright to the national government so that it may be gobbled up by what has become an efficient looting machine called the Jubilee Administration. The president wants to starve long marginalized parts of Kenya of their dues to perpetuate the system of patronage that his administration is reintroducing that seeks to return Kenyans to the era when only the national government could dispense of development and all other communities had to be beggars. Our MPs and senators must stand up against this executive dictatorship. 
We must not allow the petroleum and mineral resources within Turkana County or any other county for that matter, which, con which constitution stipulates must be equitably shared between the national government and the local communities. We must not allow such wealth to be stolen, plundered, and exploited by persons who enjoy political patronage from the national government with impunity. We must stand up for the long-suffering people of Turkana and for all the other communities on whose land petroleum has been or will be discovered in the future. The Jubilee government has stolen everything in their accounts, borrowed on its tax revenues till it is above its credit limits, and is now going for the birth, birthright of our most vulnerable communities. It must not happen to the Turkana or any other marginalized community. End of the statement. All right, and for more on that press conference uh, that was uh, issued there by Raila Odinga earlier, we have our Marimi Mwangi standing by for us at Capitol, uh, Capitol Hill, I beg your pardon. And uh, Marimi, it's good to see you. So we're hearing uh, Odinga talking about the petroleum bill and that it would uh, allow for communities to be able to benefit from uh, the extractive products that Kenya has. What else did he talk about? Uh, good afternoon, Sophia. Of course, the opposition leader was uh, expressing his opposition to the rejection of that bill, which predominantly would have given a formula on the criteria for the share of revenue from uh, petroleum uh, between the national government as well as the county governments and the residents of uh, the county where such deposits have been found. And in this particular case, Trukana County and the governor for that county has come out uh, hitting out at the president saying that his reasons for the rejection of that bill which uh, the president said was uh, the low uh, rate of absorption of the allocation to that particular county was not justified because uh, from where he stands the county has done well uh, beating even other major counties as Nairobi in the adoption or the absorption of their uh, allocation but of course the former prime minister is saying that uh, the president's actions are tantamount to usurping powers of parliament, which has uh, the powers to uh, come up with laws, and that his list of amendments that ought to be introduced in that bill uh, is, of course, a violation of the constitution. And he is trying to marshal the numbers in parliament from both uh, the ruling Jubilee coalition and the opposition to veto uh, that particular decision by the president to reject that bill, which he says would have set a proper precedent on how uh, county governments in the future would be uh, sharing out resources with the national government on uh, affairs of or issues to do with petroleum. And therefore, uh, it will be uh, interesting to see how that pans out in parliament, given that the ruling coalition has the numbers there, and the opposition would need uh, at least two thirds majority to to veto any such decision by the president, Sophia. Right. And Marimi, before I let you go, of course, the question of the Auditor General report and the queries that have been raised in as far as accountability in the counties has also come up. And this has been a topic of conversation in the last couple uh, of days owing to some of the events that so unfold, like in Kilifi. Um, are we hearing more of calls for accountability across the board and not political speak when it comes to fighting graft? Uh, remember, the former prime minister has been categorical that the arm that has the uh, institutions that can take action on corrupt officers is the government, and in particular the executive under the President Uhuru Kenyatta, who can issue orders even to the Directorate of Criminal Investigation as well as the anti-graft agency, EACC. Uh, but of course, we recently saw uh, the Kilifi governor appear before the EACC. And from the words of his lawyer, uh, senior counsel, CIA Senator James Orengo, uh, 
according to them, uh, the Kilifi governor is uh, a whistleblower and ought not to be castigated for raising concern about the suspected loss of the 51 million shillings there. But of course, remember from the reports that we have been running on uh, the damning reports from the Auditor General, uh, some counties have uh, admitted that indeed money may have been lost. Remember, for instance, for Kiambu, where up to 2.3 billion was not collected in what would have been uh, 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 such a huge sum of money from uh, uh, land rates and arrears and penalties that have accumulated over time. So uh, the position of the opposition, judging from what the former prime minister had recently said, still stands that the authority to fight graft is with the government. And uh, for them, uh, it, it is upon the executive and President Uhuru Kenyatta to marshal the various institutions that are constitutionally mandated to take action on graft to fight corruption, which has seemingly in the past few days, uh, pursuant to those reports from the Auditor General, seemingly been devolved to the counties. Sophia. Right. Thank you very much, Murumi Mwangi, for us from Capitol Hill on that petroleum bill, as well as the other statements and utterances made earlier uh, by the opposition leader, Raila Odinga.